Welcome back Blender Heads and Digital Laborers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can rig a character for motion capture, specifically rigging the face. That's right, it's now possible to take this beautiful mug and transplant all of this to your favourite characters. G'day, I'm Jamie and if you've just joined us, this is part 2 of how to create your own digi double in Blender. There's a link in the description to watch part 1 where we modelled and textured my double. If you've already come from that video, let's dive back in. To motion capture the face, we're going to be leveraging the AR kit. The AR kit was developed by Apple and it hooks into the camera on your iPhone. In the simplest terms, AR kit is a list of 52 shape keys on your model which controls things like blinking, smiling and lip sync. Using your phone, you can record your facial movements and the AR kit converts that data into keyframes which then drive all of those shapes. So how do we create all of those face shapes? If you're using the Human Generator add-on, Congratulations, Human Generator comes with a built-in rig that creates this setup for you. That said, I've found the Human Generator rig is a little bit clunky, so I'm going to show you in a minute how you can hook all of these shape keys up to a more animation-friendly rig. And for those of you who don't have Human Generator, or perhaps want to rig a non-human face like I did with Charmeleon here, I'd like to introduce you to the Face It add-on. Full disclosure, Faceit is a paid add-on, and this is the only part of this entire pipeline I haven't been able to find a free alternative to. You can replace Human Generator with Make Human or MB Labs. You can replace the motion capture suit with motion capture data from Mixamo. Even the phone app that records your facial movements is itself free. But getting that data into Blender? For that, I haven't yet found a free solution. If any of you know one, let me know in the comments below and I will add a link to the top of the description. But for now, we are going to need the Faceit add-on. Although Faceit has a lot of buttons and tabs, its main purpose is to help you create these 52 shape keys. If you want to dive deeper into it, it can also plug into a lot of other facial animation systems, some of which use even more than the 52 shapes that we'll be creating. But that's getting beyond the scope of this video. To record your facial performance, there's several iPhone apps available, but I strongly recommend using the Unreal Live Link app. A lot of the other apps out there pretend to be free and then hit you with a paywall before you can actually do anything useful with them. Being developed by Apple, the AR kit is currently only available on the iPhone. But for Android users, I have found an alternative you can explore called AI Face Markless Facial Mocap. It's not free and it can only record the 24 shape keys rather than a desired 52. But it should at least work and it gives you a place to start. When you first start Face It, it'll ask you to line up this face outline to your model. It also has a projection option to shrink wrap this outline to your face. You can then go into edit mode and individually line up these points by hand. The documentation has diagrams for exactly what needs to be lined up where. Next, this outline can be used to generate a meta rig. This meta rig gives you a bunch of controllers, some starting weight paints and a whole bunch of test animations that should roughly line up to your 52 shape keys. Here is where you can dial in those poses, either by tweaking the weight paints, shifting the controllers to better match your expressions, or if necessary, adding additional corrective shape keys so that you can sculpt in some extra fine details. Faceit does a pretty good job of creating your shape keys and hopefully you won't need to do too much tweaking. But it's not always going to be perfect and some of the AR kit names are a little obscure. Names like jaw open or mouth smile left are pretty easy to figure out. But what the hell does mouth dimple left or mouth press right look like? Lucky for us, the team at Epic Games have already figured out all these shapes with their metahumans. Now, as I said in the first video, actually getting a metahuman into Blender is near impossible at the moment since the software is still in beta. However, I have been able to get the generic shape head with all of the shape keys into an FBX. So although this thing is pretty useless for doing an actual animation, it does make for really, really good reference for sculpting your shape keys. If you want to use this metahuman head, you can download a free copy from my Gumroad page. Now we have some good reference for what each of these shapes should roughly look like. But now I'd like some reference of what my face looks like when I pull these expressions. So I grabbed my tripod and took a few photos of each facial expression so that I could try and match them using Faceit. Once you're happy with how all of these shapes have turned out, you can bake all of these details down into your 52 shapes and generate a more animation friendly rig. What's really nice is that you can test this new rig and if there's something you don't like, you can always go back to the meta rig to do more tweaking. At this point, I loaded up some test recordings I'd done earlier to see how the rig was holding up. The nasty tricks, you little hobbits. The dirty little fools. All of them. All of them. Ah, you think darkness is your ally. You merely adopted the darkness. I was born in it. 
molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Human Generator can also generate these shape keys, but currently produces a clunky rig to animate with. What's really cool is that you can link your Human Generator shape keys to this Faceit rig. I find this rig much easier to animate with, and it makes importing motion capture data much easier. To rig the rest of the body, I used Auto Rig Pro. I knew I was going to be using motion capture to animate my Digi Double, and Auto Rig Pro has some really sweet tools that make motion capture quite a bit easier. There's no reason that you couldn't use Blender's inbuilt Rigify rigs. In fact, Human Generator does create a body rig for you, and it uses Rigify as its base. By default, Rigify doesn't have any good motion capture tools associated with it, hence why I chose to re-rig with Auto Rig Pro. Again, Auto Rig Pro is a paid add-on, but it's cheap as chips and it gives you an auto rigger, motion capture tools, and a suite of tools to make importing characters into game engines such as Unreal or Unity a very simple process. But if you do need something free, I'd suggest looking into the Mixamo add-on for Blender. This is another auto rigger and it's wonderful because it allows you to very easily import data from any of the free motion capture at Mixamo. Just keep in mind that it doesn't play nearly as nicely with other motion capture data. Auto Rig Pro, on the other hand, can work with any motion capture data from anywhere. And since I'll be using my Rococo motion capture suit, I personally want to use Auto Rig Pro. Face it comes with an option to parent it to other rigs, so I can combine it with Auto Rig Pro. But this is just a parenting option, they're still technically separate rigs, and I really want just the one rig. Fortunately, if you know what you're looking for, it's possible to combine them into one. It's really important when you generate your control rig for Faceit that you choose the Apply Scale option. If the scale of your Auto Rig Pro Rig and your Faceit Rig are different, it will most likely break. You can easily combine rigs the same way that you combine geometry. Simply select both and hit Control J. To combine these rigs, you need to make sure that you select the Auto Rig Pro Rig first, then the Faceit Rig, and then join them. The final rig needs to be called Faceit Control Rig. If it's not, it will break the Faceit add-on when you try and load your motion capture data. When we joined the two rigs, it takes the name of the second selected rig. If we select our mesh and go to the modifiers, you'll see that the armature modifier is no longer connected to its rig. You'll want to manually change this to the newly combined Faceit control rig. If you try and move your rig now, you'll see that the Faceit rig doesn't follow the head controller. If we go into the Faceit rig, you'll see this C underscore face underscore main bone. This is the main controller for the face at rig, and we'll need to parent this bone to the head bone on the Auto Rig Pro rig. Now the face controllers should follow the head. You may want to do a little bit of cleanup on your weight paints, as both rigs can sometimes fight over what gets painted where. Thankfully, this should only be on things like the head and the neck. This shouldn't mess up the weight paints on your fingers or legs, for example. Now, in my case, I'm lucky enough to own my own Rococo motion capture suit, so I'm able to do all of my own mocap recordings. However, this setup will work perfectly fine with other motion capture data, such as those from Mixamo. If you want a full breakdown on how to set up motion capture using Auto Rig Pro, check out my Motion Capture The Right Way series. There'll be a link in the description. As a final tip, I'm a big fan of the Animation Layers add-on. This add-on allows you to tweak your motion capture data, both body and face, so that you can dial in the nuances of your performance and fix any issues that come with the motion capture data. I've also found it really useful for having your body mocap on one layer and your facial mocap on another. It really helps avoid confusion with all of those keyframes, and you can do things like smooth keyframes on just the body mocap, leaving the facial mocap alone. But now, I can import motion capture data onto the rig using Auto Rig Pro, as well as using the Face It add-on to import facial capture. And then voila, we have a character with full body and facial capture inside of Blender. And that is how I created my own Digi Double. Now, I realize that we've covered quite a bit of ground in these last two videos, so if you've got any specific questions, let me know in the comments and I'll either try and point you in the right direction, or I'll use it as an excuse to make another more specific video. But I think it's about time my Digi Double meets his new best friend. Oh, hey buddy, didn't see you there. You uh, good to go? Jar. You want a lift? Jar, jar me again. Okay, I guess that means you're walking. 
Hey, wait up!